Hello Tacticians, it's Nox here, and today we have our first look at Matenio, the Jump Pack Intercessor Sergeant for the Blood Angels. But before we get into him, I just want to say my usual thank yous, and today they go to Conky, Yankor, Jackius, Kane, and Player3510. All of you have used my friend code, and it is very much appreciated, as it really does help me out. So, thank you once again. And now on to Matenio. So, unsurprisingly, he is a Blood Angel, which doesn't actually give him anything special, like some of the other traits we've seen in the past. He has a Deep Strike, which is an interesting one to see on this character, as he does have quite a large movement, so you may not be needing to use that all the time. He has also got Flying, which, because he's got a Jump Pack, isn't that surprising. And finally, he's got Rapid Assault, so this means this character moves 5 until he gets into combat. I think this is now the fastest character we have, and may end up seeing a place in the usual tournament arena team, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Here we've got him at the tournament arena style, a rare or if you prefer Guild War, one of the first stopping points. As you can see, he only has the one plasma shot, so what makes this character interesting? Well, it's his active ability. If he is not moved, he gains Infiltrate, which means no Overwatch shots. And then he charges an enemy within six hexes. He then deals power damage and additional physical damage to all enemies adjacent to him. If Matenio is at or below 50% health, which he probably won't be when you trigger this, it doubles the damage. So this is an ability which has got a high risk, high reward element. His passive ability is the aggressive onslaught, so when he's charging, and that's defined as when he has moved adjacent to its melee target this turn and started the movement not being adjacent to it, so he can't move around the same target and class is charging, he then summons two jump pack intercessors adjacent to and they all immediately attack the target. At the beginning of each of Matenio's turns, if he is still on the battlefield, all Jump Pack Intercessors summoned will leave. So they only arrive for the turn and then chip off. Unless, of course, he dies, in which case they're going to hang around for a little while and cause some more chaos. And here are all his skills and abilities at various stopping points as you level him up. Unsurprisingly, the amount of damage that he does as you level up the skills is increased, but he doesn't get to summon any more intercessors. It will only remain at two, no matter what you get that to. Obviously, the amount of damage that they do does also increase. So let's have a look at this in action. So here is our usual made-up scenario. Now, if you were to just drop Matenio in, you'll see that he still triggers the Overwatch. And it looks as though he can quite happily take a crit from Calendus and still be kicking around. Unfortunately, if this was real, he would then die in their next turn. So let's give him a chance at something to fight, shall we? And here we are again, and this time both Rayvas and Calendus have got Overwatch, but Matenio has got a trick up his sleeve. If we activate his Hammer of Wrath, he will gain Infiltrate until the end of the turn, and he'll charge an enemy within six hexes. So, who are we going to charge? We are going to charge Calendus. So we go in, and as you can see, there's no real choice about where he ends up. So you're going to have to be careful where you put that landing. But he does kill Calendus in one shot. And, of course, his buddies come in as well. But they're not going to do anything unless you can trigger them again. If Calendus was obviously alive, they would have also attacked. So let's do that again and target Ray Vass. So we've rewound back to the point where we were before, and this time we're going to do the Hammer of Wrath on Ray Vass, and let's see what happens. So Calendus took some damage, the Intercessors also attack Ray Vass, but he is left alive. The benefit, of course, in either TA or Guild War, it means he won't be able to overwatch anyone else from here on in. And if we just skip the enemy's turn, you'll see that the two Intercessors run away. I, I, I mean, fly away, tactically. This allows us to charge into another character, and let's choose one in the corner, such as Orn Shi. He'll get shot, and in comes one Intercessor to also shoot. So, if there isn't enough room, only one, or even none, of the Intercessors will appear. Now, the Intercessors themselves have an interesting trait called Red Thirst. If this unit is at or below 50% health, it'll gain extra damage, 
and scores an additional hit when charging. But the only way this will ever trigger is if, of course, Matenio is dead and the intercessors remain on the battlefield. So will this guy have any impact on the TA? Well, if we take a usual sort of setup where you have Orn, Shi, Ragnar, Corodius to make your own team move faster again, or to be more specific, to make Khan move faster and Celestine, and let's put them in a position which would be more or less true. And to be honest, nowadays you'd probably put Celestine here to protect Orn, Shi. So can the player who goes second have any impact on this? Can they do anything at all? And the unfortunate answer is no, he can't, as his active ability requires the enemy to be six X's away, and as you can see in this scenario, they're actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hexes away. So on this map, at least, there's not going to be any change. Will there be change in all the maps, dependent on where he's placed? Maybe, but nothing too massive. However, what would he do to Orn Shi or Ragnar if he had the chance? So let's start by putting Orn Shi in the sacrificial square. And let's just use the Hammer of Wrath. So half damage to Orn Shi and nearly killed him off. Not too shabby as you would follow up. And just in case you're wondering, yes, this is an attack that can be done from the very first turn. And even with the high ground, not quite enough to kill off Orn Shi. And what if it was Ragnar? What would happen here? Again, approximately half damage. So it's not a terrible attack. Just don't assume you're going to kill anyone with it. So we saw that he's not overly successful in killing people when he's on full health. What about when he's below half health, when that damage gets doubled? And we've got some high armour targets here and an interesting one with Celestine. So let's see what actually happens. So we'll do the stomp on Alephanel, who dies, the intercessors get called in, and then the explosion happens. It's an interesting sequence of events, but maybe one that we need to be aware of, as of course the explosion could kill Matteo and leave the intercessors behind. Now let's try the same thing against Rotbone. A lot of damage there but there was a crit and the two intercessors failed to kill him off, he's left on one health because of his resilient trait. So under half health he definitely is a force to be reckoned with. But let's see what happens with Celestine as she will have the summons to protect her. So here we go, there's Celestine, in goes the jump pack, a couple of crits, and there you go. So the initial one dies, then Celestine's second one protects against these two, and unfortunately it was then the enemy's turn and the Gemini superior then goes to kill Matteo. So he's not really someone who's going to work well against Celestine. So as a new player, should you put effort into unlocking Matenio here? as there are obvious parallels between Matenio and Bellator. The one benefit that Matenio here gives you is going to be in those legendary events. Bellator, however, you will need to complete your campaigns. So if you're a new player, concentrate on Bellator, but make sure you do unlock this character as he will help you out in the long run, especially considering that this character will tick boxes for power, physical, plasma damage, one attack, he really does start ticking all the boxes for the legendary events. If you like these videos, then it would be much appreciated if you at least think about using my friend code, as it really does help me out. Or if you or your guilds are looking for a new home, please reach out to any of the guilds shown, as we'll always welcome new people into our midst. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you on the battlefield.